Hi everybody, welcome back to In the Kingdom. Today we are talking about the, tradi the traditions behind the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm trying to talk fast so the videos are short. How it was celebrated back in the biblical times was every morning of during Sukkot or during the Feast of Tabernacles, a high priest would walk out to this water gate and he would draw water with this pitcher. And there was a big celebration as he did this. The, and the people like dance around and declare Isaiah 12 3 which says with joy shall you draw water from the wells of salvation this is actually where Jesus or Yeshua healed the blind man during Sukkot at the pool of Siloam so while this is going on with the water feast there was this other group of priests who would go out and cut down these green leafy branches and they would come back parading them to the temple they would um, the priest with the water and the priest with the green leafy branches would come back at the same time and they were waving those branches and the sound of it would sound like the rush of the Holy Spirit. Whenever Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He actually said this during the Feast of Tabernacles when they were doing this water ceremony. Then they would light these huge towering um, like candles or lamps. Like a, a priest would have to climb a ladder to get up to them. And they had like gallons and gallons of oil that were inside them and they had these wicks that were made out of like the the torn up or old linens of the priests throughout the year so every courtyard in Jerusalem was filled with these giant lit candles and that was actually referred to as the light of the world now very interesting fact that Yeshua Jesus many 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 people think that he was actually born during the Feast of Tabernacles. The light of the world was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. He came to tabernacle with us. And that would mean that he was conceived or that the angel visited Mary actually in December, which is closest to the Festival of Lights, which is Hanukkah. It's just, oh, I need to do a mind-blowing series about that because learning about his actual birth time was just mind blowing. Time. So every night there was this huge celebrations for the Feast of Tabernacles, and um, the people would have um, sukkahs or, or temporary shelters built in their yards or on their balconies everywhere, and they would go outside and eat in these little tabernacles every night. Now, traditionally, that is still done. They still make sukkahs in their yard, it is commanded, and there's like all kinds of laws about what the sukkah is supposed to be like. None of that is actually in the Bible. Um, but there are laws about how big it has to be and that you have to eat at least one meal in it a night, whether it's cold or rainy or whatever. Get out there and eat a bite, say your blessings, and go back in the house. There are some churches that have like entire church campouts for the entire week of um, the Feast of Tabernacles. They still make the lulav, which is, uh, which is the citrus fruit and the green things, and they wave them like the sound of the Holy Spirit, and they'll take those to temple with them. Um, they build the sukkahs in their yard. The sukkahs are just decorated so beautifully with like lights in them or, or um, different fruits. Um, it is just, it is made to be like a beautiful outdoor wedding ceremony for seven days and it is a time to rejoice and be joyful. Um, if you want to know the traditions behind the sukkah, the traditions are it must have at least three walls. That they cover the, the sukkah with the, um, with green leafy plants. It has to have more shade than it has sun, or it is considered an invalid sukkah. Um, you have to be able to see the stars through it so that you know that God is the one that you depend on um, for your protection. They start building their sukkahs right after Yom Kippur, and um, it has to be at least big enough for a person's head and most of their body and for a little table so they can at least eat and say their blessings in it. That are That's the like rules, the man-made rules behind the sukkah, but um, all the Bible says is that you will dwell in booths. So do with that what you will. And uh, tomorrow I will tell you about what we are planning to do for our Feast of Tabernacles and our Sukkot. I pray that you guys are blessed and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.